My name is Megan Ross and I'm studying a Bachelor of Psychology at Monash University. I was on the VC Honor Roll for Psychology and today we're going to be talking about Lazarus and Folkman's Transactional Model of Stress and Coping. So in this video we're going to be talking about the different stages and appraisals which are a part of this model. We're also going to talk about a scenario which will help give you some context and see how it is applied. And we'll also go through some strengths and weaknesses of this model. So in this model, stress is an encounter between an individual and their environment. So this is why it is called the transactional model, because this is considered a transaction between the person and their environment. In this model, the stress response depends on the person's interpretations of the stressor and their ability to cope with it. So this really helps to give us that individual difference of why some people find some situations stressful, why others don't, because it all depends on them and their interpretations. So this model really is consistent of two stages, their primary appraisal and their secondary appraisal. So if we look at the primary appraisal, this is where we evaluate or judge the significance of the event. So we're going to ask ourselves, is this relevant to me? Will this benefit me at all or am I in trouble? So if it is irrelevant to us, we just won't worry about the event at all because it doesn't matter to us. So why would we stress over it? We could also determine it to be positive, which is benign positive, just meaning it is only positive. So that's also, if it's a good thing, we won't stress about it because it's good. Next, we can deem it as stressful. So this is where we can deem something as being a harm or loss. So this is what damage has already occurred. So like, have I been hurt? Have I lost something? So if you've already lost money, this would fall under here. You've broken an arm, that falls under this category. The next is we could deem it a threat. This is where damage may occur in the future. I may lose money next week or in a month's time. I may break my arm tomorrow, something like that. We could also deem it a challenge. So this is an assessment of potential growth or gain. So this will be difficult, but I will get something out of it. So like year 12 may be considered a challenge because it'll be hard, but something good will come out of it. Next, we go on to our secondary appraisal. So if we've deemed it as stressful in the previous one, we now need to deem and evaluate our coping options and resources. So we need to ask ourselves, what can be done about it? How can I deal with it? And what resources do I have? We can deem it adequate. So we have adequate resources to cope. We're not going to stress about it because we have enough resources available for us to cope. So resources could be um, family and friends, support networks, a counsellor, some different strategies. So maybe exercise helps you with stress, stuff like that. If we have adequate stuff to cope, we just won't worry about it. However, if we have inadequate resources to cope, we will deem it as stress. So that's the stages of the model. So now let's apply this to an example. This is from the 2018 exam. If you haven't read this already, please pull the video and check it out. So we can see that the question here is, with reference to Jeter's situation, write a detailed analysis of her sources of stress, biological response, and psychological response. In your response, discuss the theories and models of stress and or coping that are relevant to the scenario. Well, this model actually covers the psychological responses. So we're just going to focus on this part of the question. If you want a more holistic answer to this question, please go check out the video on how to answer 10 mark questions. I'm just going to go through now and highlight some different things that are relevant to our psychological responses. So we're going to start off with her primary appraisals. So the first one we have is harm loss. So she's lost a significant relationship and she's lost money for her expensive car repairs. So this is the damage that has already been done. We could also deem a threat. So that's loss of her part-time job is a threat to her finances. She could lose money in the future because she's lost her job. We could also deem it as a challenge. So she's lost her part-time job. This may be considered an opportunity to find a better one. So we can see that there's different primary appraisals we could make there. Next, we move on to her secondary appraisals. Now, this requires more um, detailed analysis of the different stages, so comparing semester one to semester two, because at semester one, she had adequate resources to cope as she had a family and friendship network, and this was quite enough. She wasn't really that stressed. With her breakup, these began to falter a little bit, but she did get through it as she had medication and dance classes. At the start of semester two, when she needed her expensive car repairs, it appears she had inadequate resources to cope on her own, just through the scenario and all those things we kind of highlighted. At the end of semester two, she did seek help and her resources to cope again were adequate. She was able to change her appraisal, so she wasn't stressed about it. She saw it as a challenge and saw things would improve in the future. Next, we're going to go through the strengths and weaknesses of this model. So the strengths is that it really accounts for that individual difference. So it tells us why some people find things stressful and others not. Um, and it really depends on the individual with their ability to cope and what resources they have. So it's great for that. Another thing about this model is that 
It was really built off observations that were performed on people. It wasn't observed on animals like the gas model was. So that's great. We also have the individual plays an active role rather than a passive role. So it really takes into the account of that cognitive processing, which a lot of models leave out. Now we're going to go through the weaknesses of this model. So it is difficult to perform true experiments here. This is because it is unethical to put people in stressful situations and kind of see what happens. Um, it is also difficult to analyze what people are thinking, all those kinds of things. So it is more observation based and questionnaire based, which can have some unreliable results and whatnot. So primary and secondary appraisals can also influence each other and are considered to be taken simultaneously. Because if you think about it, when you come across a stressful situation, do you really think, does this matter to me? Am I stressed? Do I have adequate resources? Go Not really. You kind of just think about it and are stressed. So that also comes on to the next point. Do we really need to appraise it for it to be stressful? Do you just think about a test and go, I'm stressed? Or do you actually sit there and think about all those different things and all those different models? Uh, it also overlooks the physiological response. It really leaves out what the gas model has. It doesn't account for things like high heart rate, um, increase, increased blood pressure, all those kinds of things. So it's really just focused on the psychological aspect, which is a weakness of gas, but is a strength of this model. So you can see that it just kind of leaves out some things. 